one, isn't she, Albert? Must be, or she wouldn't be out on a night like this. No weather for a dog. Nor for no cat, neither. Too gloomy, Dobbs. Too gloomy. Much too severe. Sorry, sir. One does one's best. Oh, quite. Uh, just take away the ship thing, will you? More, uh, more uh, vivacity is needed. Chase, yes, certainly, Dobbs, but, but not funereal. Ah. Yeah? The, uh, the deaf feminine touch, Dobbs. You've taken the wine from my pet bin, haven't you? The very best. Yes, well, the best is none too good for the occasion. Now, just, uh, just see to the aperitif, will you? Dobbs, really, you're, you're downright Victorian. You must have cocktails, Dobbs. Cocktails. Not cocktails, sir. Yes. Now, don't tell me that it isn't British. You're deplorably behind the times. I drink it myself. And what's more, I can mix them. Mix is the word. They tell me they even put ice in them in America. Yes, well, uh, I don't think we'll go quite that far. Walt Stewart, darling, I don't fancy freezing my dainty shape while you ask Papa permission to come out and play. <laughs> Back in a tick, Bertie. Uh -huh. Mind, Dobbs. Not a word that we haven't seen him for a fortnight. Well, Russell, my boy. Welcome to the family heart. Hello, Father. Nasty night out, eh? What a fog. Yeah. Thicker than mutton broth. <laughs> Hello, Dobbs. How's the old aches and twinges this weather? Thank you, sir. Awfully nice of you, my boy, to dare the fog just for an evening with your aged male parents. There's nothing I'd like better. Meanwhile, what price a cocktail? Yes, Dobbs was shocked at that. Dobbs, where's the old training? Take Mr. Russell's coat and hat. You're surprised, aren't you, that I know about cocktails? You know, I'd learned from a barman at the Savoy. He used to live in Chicago. Allow me, sir. Uh, thanks, Dobbs, but don't bother. I've got to be popping off directly. You're not stopping for dinner, then? Uh. I'm terribly sorry, Father, but uh, when I promised you to come, I overlooked another engagement. Well, it's, uh, it's quite all right, of course. Only I'd hoped... Uh, well, it <laughs> can't be helped, can it? I mean to say one does have other engagements, of course. I know it seems fairly awful. Let's have luncheon together tomorrow. We'll have a good old-fashioned reunion. And you can scold me in a good old-fashioned way. <laughs> Meanwhile, as you suggest, what price the merry old cocktail? Gentlemen, I give you Sir Gerald Courtney, my father, and a jolly good sportsman. 
Thank you. Mm, I say, you do know something about cocktails. Mm. Was that chap from Chicago, did you say? Uh, one of the survivors. <laughs> one of the survivors. You know, that's a fruity joke. Is your engagement tonight with... Uh... Uh, uh, save the scolding for tomorrow. Like a good fellow. Won't you? I wish we could talk things out together, my boy. Tomorrow, at luncheon. Uh, we'll both make after-dinner speeches. Right. Tomorrow, then. One o'clock, pronto. Uh, and now I'll be toddling along, sir, if you don't mind. Good night, Father. Good night, my boy. Mind the fog. Right you are. It was more like a tick and a half. Did Papa let his little boy come out to play with bad little girl? <laughs> Chuck it, Bertine. <laughs> to the pigeon pie, old chum, and don't spare the carburetor. After me. I'll explain later. My dear girl, we were worried about oh. you. Camping about in this fog. Why on earth didn't you take a taxi? Oh. Uh, yes, well, uh, officers, what is it? Uh. Come, come, uh, what's all this about? You see, sir, uh, we thought she was a... Uh, <coughs> uh, we thought, my lord, that she, uh, that is, we thought, I mean, uh, uh, we thought that she got lost in the fog, uh, didn't we, Albert? Oh, yes, uh, lost in the fog. That's what we thought. My niece, lost in a little mist, <laughs> not this young lady. However, my dear, you should have taken a taxi. You'd telephoned, we'd have sent the car for you. Hurry now, get out of this wet coat. Dobbs has kept dinner waiting, and you know Dobbs. Good old Dobbs. Uh, uh, yes, uh, quite so, good old Dobbs. Thanks so much. Wouldn't have troubled you for worlds. Good night, officers. You've been uh, commendably vigilant. Good night. Thank you, sir. His niece, the general caught in his niece. And us, thinking her was nothing but a... <sighs> Stow that, Albert. Stow it, mate. Better rest a moment. Rather, if you don't mind. Just until Albert and his pal clear off. Sit down here. I knew my purse leaked, but rain is the only thing that ever leaked into it. Try what it is. Probably give me the gout after these gospels I'm used to. <laughs> oh, blimey. A short life and a merry one. <laughs> it's no use trying to thank you. It was wonderfully sporting of you to take a chance on me. A stranger, off the street. Oh, I see. That's rather an ugly way of putting it, off the street. Why did you do it? Well, you, you look lonely and uh, a bit frightened. I and mean, it just happens that uh, I am, too. 
You, lonely and scared. <laughs> That's about as true as that I'm your niece. Uh, rough and neat, wasn't it, that thought about the niece? And good old Dobbs. Well, Dobbs is a fact. Oh, quite a fact. Ah, Dobbs himself. I simply can't believe it. Word of honor. Is uh, dinner served, Dobbs? Yes, sir. Hmm. Oh, but, uh, but you're not going. Have you forgotten that we waited dinner for you? Albert and his friend will be gone by now. Oh, but I, I, I mean it. Really. I want you to stay. In a way, you know, you rather owe it to me. Will you? Why not? Why not indeed? You uh, hear what the young lady says, Doug? Why not, sir? Uh, quite. And you might just give us a hand here. Uh, let me help you with that coat, niece. Thank you, uncle. <laughs> You've been disappointed, haven't you? I? Oh, not a bit of it. You fit perfectly. Really. I don't mean me. Fish and chips is more my style. But I mean the lady you were expecting to dinner. But I wasn't expecting a lady. No, really. As a matter of fact, I was expecting a man. A young man that I'm rather fond of. I'm a schoolboy. He'll let me have it tomorrow at lunch. But darling, you're having luncheon with me at my flat. Little boy, rather have a scolding from a oh. calm than a cozy little chummy little. Pardon me, Nikolai, won't you? been talking. Telling me story of my life, you might say. Yes? Excuse, Mr. Gerald. I, uh, that is, he just telephoned, sir. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I'll speak to him. He didn't wait, sir. He, uh, he gave me a message. He said that, uh, he couldn't have luncheon with you tomorrow. I see. Uh, thank you, Dobbs. Disappointed again? Eh? Oh. 
By the boy? The one you were telling me about at dinner? Oh, I hate to see him do it. It's not the drink alone or women. A few wild oats are indicated for a young man, but this woman, oh. Well, you know, he could become a really great architect. There's a touch of genius in his drawings. Why do you know, even when he was a little chap, he... Stop. You are fond of him, aren't you? We've been the best of comrades, always. And now there seems to be a, a barrier between us. We can't even talk things out. There are two times when no one can advise a man. The first is when he's drinking too much. The other is when he loves the wrong woman. Does that bar even a father? Especially a father. You know, you make me feel very inexperienced. As if you knew a lot more about life and things than I. No, oh, I do. A great deal more. About life and men and women. Particularly men. Hmm. You might uh, advise me. Might? Oh, I expect I'm hopelessly of another generation. Maybe I'm too old. You? Old? <laughs> Well, I'm still young enough to fairly purr at that. Well, well, here I am going on about my troubles. And usually it's the other way around, isn't it? I mean, uh, usually it's the young lady who tells the story of her life. I'm not sure. I've never had any such experience. Yes. So? You see, this is my first night at, at that sort of thing. It does sound like the usual story, doesn't it? Fact, though. I've been broke. And I decided it was either that or... or the bridge. Oh. Oh, I never could feel sorry enough for myself to have a go at the bridge. You know, that's interesting. Very. And just tonight, you decided to put yourself, uh, let us say, on the market? I'm afraid I have. Three? Not by long odds. Good. Because I want to make a bid for your, uh, your services. After all, I did put myself on the, let us say, market. Then, uh, then you'd be willing to... Uh... Oh, I, I, I say, I, I didn't mean that. I, really, I, I mean, it's not me, you see. It, at, at least, uh, not exactly. I... Look here. What would you do for 1,000 pounds? 1,000 pounds? Hmm. Five thousand mm dollars? -hmm. Do you mean it? What would I do? <laughs> Just try me. Uh, uh, interesting, uh, very. This is our best number. Oh, uh, uh, awfully, uh, I mean to say, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, quite. Oh, thank you. The young lady is waiting, Sir Gerald. Oh, uh, thanks so much, ma'am. I, I mean to say, uh, thanks so much. Oh, hey. I, I beg your pardon, I really do. Uh, this way, Sir Gerald, please. Oh, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I had no idea that... Oh, come in, Jerry. I didn't think they made bashful men anymore. But, uh... And you haven't said a word about this. Well, it's, it, it's, it's fairly breathtaking. Uh, stunning, I, I, I mean to say, stunning. <laughs> and do you think it might catch our young man's eye? Look here, my dear. 
Let's give this thing up. I've been thinking it over and... Uh... Mm, sorry, old man. A bargain's a bargain. But... <laughs> you know, I don't want to put you in such a position. Now, don't you fret about me, Jerry. I'm having the time of my life. And I want that thousand pounds. Oh, look here, I'll give you a thousand pounds and we'll forget all about our little plot. I've got to earn that money. I promised to get your son away from that woman and I'm going to do it. But I must tell you that... Uh, Are you pleased, Sir Gerald, with the negligee uh, and the... Oh, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, we'll take these and, uh, and these. And these? And this too, if you don't mind. No, by all means, if you will have it. <laughs> They're rather expensive, aren't they? Well, that's rather in their favor, isn't it? Oh. Um, shall I have these sent to your apartment, madam? And uh, madam's address? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, the address? Is uh, 7, uh, Comstabry Street. And uh, uh, might I just see the manager, please? Oh, certainly, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Fancy, madam not knowing her own address. <laughs> <laughs> It's not so strange. My, my agent only took the place this afternoon. Is it the one we wanted? No, quite. But I still feel, uh... Well... <laughs> come on, boys and girls. Oh, we're all good, Tommy. Oh, 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 oh,
Uh, sorry, some other time. Other engagement. One does have other engagements. Engagement with a lady, too. Uh, but maybe I could give you a drink. Drink? Me? No, don't drink. Gave him a solemn promise. Word of honor. And then perhaps a cup of coffee. Oh, I can't sleep a week when I drink coffee at night. Say, who wants coffee anyway? Oh, how about a dash of whiskey? Nature's own remedy. The very thing. Strange I didn't think of that myself. This can't be a respectable place. <laughs> no, ma'am. Much too cozy to be respectable. <laughs> Clever little spider. Uh, uh, but I must be toddling along. Uh -huh. <laughs> Engagement. Beautiful lady. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just what I needed. <laughs> what you really need, old man, is a tuck-in and a little bye-bye. <laughs> Naughty little spider. Gotta be getting along. <laughs> Come on. Just a little rest, old man. Uh, now I know it isn't respectable. <laughs> Beds are respectable. Oh, no, man. <laughs> Especially this bed isn't re respectable. Wicked little spider. <laughs> Come on. Just a little rest. <laughs> Go bye-bye. <laughs> Go bye-bye.
<laughs> Was I fairly awful? The important thing is, how are you this morning? Fairly awful. You'll feel better after some tea and a bit of breakfast. Don't you think a mild brandy and soda would be more to the point? I seem to remember nothing except vaguely a, a lost key and something about the Rock of Gibraltar. Don't you remember anything else? You don't mean to tell me... Well, that is, maybe it's not quite courteous, but... Uh, but oh, dear. Not even calling me a cute, naughty little spider? Did I do that? Baby talk. <laughs> and what else? What else? Look here. I mean, did I... That is, uh, did we... Oh, you mean, uh, did you... That is, did we... Where am I, anyway? <laughs> Isn't it the girl that's supposed to ask that? Oh, where am I? You're in my flat. I found you wandering about in the hallway and thought you'd be safer here with me. Was I? Was you what? Was I safer? <laughs> Better get into these, hadn't you? But I mean, didn't we... That is, oh, how did I get out of these and into these? <laughs> Don't blush. It's all right. I went study to be a trained nurse. Look here, you're an awfully good sort. I'm afraid I misjudged. Hmm. I'm sorry. Good heavens. I just remembered. I had an engagement. With a lady? Uh-huh. A very important lady? Well, she seemed important last night. Awfully. And she won apologizing to this morning. Don't overdo the apologies. After all, you didn't do anything but break an engagement. Then I... Then I didn't... That is... We... <laughs> oh. I simply can't understand why you've done such a thing for me, a, a perfect stranger. Well, I didn't do it for you, precisely. And you're not a perfect stranger. Far from perfect, I should say. Mm -hmm. Well, then we've met before somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mutual friends? <laughs> it's too much of a riddle in my present feeble condition. You'll feel better after a tub than a bit of breakfast. But look here. I'd like to, uh, that is, well, I'd like to talk with you. The tub first. Up in your own flat, then back here for breakfast. In a cozy chair. Do you care for that? Care for it? Oh, I say I'd love it. What do you mean you can't put me through? Pull up your socks, sister, and let's hear that tinkle. Ring them. What's that? Oh, ring them again. Never mind, then.
Maybe there is another woman. When I hook them, they stay hooked. But you haven't seen him, so you tell me, for more than a month. If anything drove Russell off, it's your jealousy. It spoiled everything. It's business. Business? Of course. Monkey business. You are still in love with him, my precious. But remember, you still have me. How can I forget it? If you do, it will be just deplorable. The woman who tries to make the fool out of me. Do you know what I would do? No, darling. How could I love anyone but my Nikki? Don't tell me you've lost your key. <laughs> I'll always bless the one you did lose. I hope you always will. Good heavens, 11 o'clock. You've got to run along. Remember, you're a hard-working man. Well, don't you imagine one can overdo this early rising? Run along now like a good little boy. Tea again tomorrow? Good night, then, June. These have been great days for me. They've been great for me, too. Really, June? Good night, dear boy. I know. Now, really, Jerry, who else would think of calling me at such a time? I'm afraid it is rather late, but I do so want to see you. Look here, suppose I bring the car around. Well, I could I could wait down the street. A little air might do you good. What? Besides, I've got something to tell you. Feeling better? Mm. I knew a drive would do you good. I was tired, but I'm not now. You know, I feel rather guilty dragging you out like this. You needn't. I wanted to come. What did you have to tell me? Oh, lots of things. You're too sleepy now to listen. No, no, I'm not. Really. <laughs> Have a light, sir. Father, this is a surprise. <laughs> Sit down, won't you? Or better still, let's have tea together. No, no, awfully sorry, my boy. But you don't have to tea seriously. Just because I'm not drinking is no reason why you shouldn't have a spot of the best. Well, to tell you the truth, my boy, I, I have an engagement. Uh, <clears throat> can't be helped, can it? One does have other engagements, of course. No, but, but really, well, I... Oh, some wench, I presume, no, eh? No, 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 my boy. Save the scolding for luncheon tomorrow. What are our fathers coming to, anyway? <laughs> Well, you see, I, I was just toddling by and I thought I'd pop in and, uh, uh, by the way, Cotton says you're doing uh, rather well. Rather well? Modest old Cotton. Look here, if he gives me the proper chance, I'll put this musty old firm on its feet. <laughs> Good boy.
My job's about done. And I think I deserve a pat on the head. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's only a month. And the other woman's out of it, and the boy is hard at work. Oh, it's all beyond thanks. I've got my boy back, and I owe you... Uh... You owe me exactly 1,000 pounds. You've earned it, too, every penny. It wasn't really such a hard job. Russell's a decent boy. And, after all, a few wild oats are indicated. <laughs> you know, the amazing thing to me is that uh, he hasn't fallen in love with you. I've been careful of that. Russell and I are just good pals. As if I were a sister or another chap. Suppose he were in love with you. It couldn't be. You see, there's another man. Another? Uh, no. Oh. Shot? You shouldn't be. Trudy, I, I never imagined that... Oh, perhaps you should be. Because the other man is... is you. Oh, my dear, my dear, I've been waiting and wanting to tell you what... And I've been wanting to hear it. But not now. No, don't. It's no go, Jerry. I hate to remind you, but... I'm only a woman that came to you from the street. No, oh, my dear, you're not really that sort. You see, you'd never be able to trust me. You'd always wonder about the past. All men do. Oh, don't say things like that. I tell you, I, I wouldn't care. I'd trust you in spite of anything that happened. It's too good to be true. Much too good to be true. Oh, have faith, my dear. Have faith. I have. Perhaps. It might be. But I must go away first, if only for a little while. And when I come back, if I come back... I won't let you go. Oh, but I must go and think things out away from you. In the meantime, my job's not quite done. We always agreed we should tell Russell the truth. Mm. And now's the time. We must be fair with the boy. You know, I almost wish we... Oh, don't you bother. I'll tell him. But... He'll take it with a smile. <laughs> you see, we're pals. <laughs> These quiet little teas have been the sweetest things in my life. You've been a great pal, June. We are pals, aren't we, Russell? The best, and nothing but. Look here. You're not going serious on me, are you? Sometimes it's hard even for pals to talk about things. After the lectures I've listened to, <laughs> fire away, old chum. Swing the bloomin' axe. Remember that first morning when you found yourself in my bed? Spare my blushes. And I told you you weren't precisely a stranger. Perfect stranger was the exact and somewhat vicious phrase. You see, I knew about you, Russell. All about you. You did say you trained for nursing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please go on. I knew about you because I was hired. Hired to find out. To get you away from that other girl. You're joking. But June, who would? Your father. <laughs> Good old governor. Now, wouldn't he, though, just... You're not angry. Angry? Angry because the two dearest people in the world saved me from making a fool of myself? I knew you'd take it this way. I told him you would. What other way is there? How could I be anything but grateful when it brought me you? You dear, dear June. And I'll play the little joke off on Father. <laughs> Rare old father when I tell him about us. You know already, don't you, June? No, no. Oh, Russell. Oh, no, you didn't know. You know how I love you, how Don't I want you. Don't say it. You. Don't. But I have said it. Oh. You mean you don't care for me? That way, I mean? June. Is there... Is there someone else?
forget it then, June. I'm sorry. Awfully sorry. Just forget what I've said. We're still pals. June. It's not... Not him. Not my father. Half or more, Dobbs. Never remove the rare old liquors. Drinking, Russell? Drinking? <laughs> I'd scarcely call it drinking, Sir Gerald. Let us say, uh, uh, preparation. Laying a foundation for some real drinking. Surely you don't grudge me a mild spot of whiskey. You share everything else with your only son. Gentlemen, I give you Sir Gerald Courtney. My father. <laughs> and when I say I give him, gentlemen, I mean I give him. You can have him. I don't want him. What's got into you, my boy? Unusual what? Prodigal son disowning proud father? No, you're talking nonsense. Oh, quit it. Quit your lies. You've been bleating that you and I couldn't talk things out. Well, we're going to talk now, only I'm going to do the talking. She's told me, told me they're sneaking underhand tricks. Steady on my boy. She's told me, told me how you sent it to me, to make me love her, to make me want her more than I've ever wanted anything. You love her? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yes, you're sorry. You didn't know. Russell, I only meant... No, oh, don't whine. Talk up like a man. Don't merely mouth please, me. Please, please, please believe, believe me. Believe you? Why should I believe you? You're a liar. Listen to me. You've got to listen. You listen. I'm sick of lies and sick of liars. Sick of everything. Reform me, eh? You reform me. You and that one, you hypocrite. Sending her to me. My own father sending you his... don't say that. Ugly word, isn't it? But it fits her. The woman you picked up from the streets. Nothing but a common... Stop! Go ahead, hit me. You've done everything else to me. If it were anyone else but my own son, I'd... Well, I haven't the same compunction. My father... <laughs> What's happened? Tell me, Jerry. He's been here, and he's gone. Forever. Oh, no. No. I'll bring him back to you. I'll... He wanted to strike me. My own son. Oh, no, no, he didn't. He didn't mean to. He's only a boy. And he was hurt, like a boy. He wanted to hurt someone else. Try to understand. You wouldn't mind if a child in the nursery struck you. That's what it was. I've lost my son. Oh. No, no. It can't be. 
I won't let it happen. It has happened. And I'm to blame. It's all my fault. Oh, I might have known it would be like this. I think I did know in my heart. But I wouldn't listen. You see, I love you, Jerry. And I wanted to help you. Great help I've been. I... I do love you. I'll always love you. And I love you too much to hurt you. You? Hurt me? Do you think I could go on and have you remember that because of me you lost him? boy, isn't it, Jerry? You want him. It's not too late. I'll find him and send him back to you. That's what you hired me for, wasn't it? To save your boy for a thousand pounds. You just watch me earn that money. Hello. Who? Russell! Why, darling! Am I surprised? Or rather, you sound familiar, though. Just a bit tight, aren't you? I thought you'd given up whiskey and me. What's that? A party? I'm just ripe for a binge. Where? Your flat? Don't know about that. You know, the last time you asked me to meet you there, you didn't show up. All right, darling. Your flat, 11 o'clock. Bye. Yes, I will. Bye. Russell, Russell, darling, surely you're not napping. Here's Berthine. Shut your mouth. Where is he? Please don't, Nikolai. Come, my angel. Don't be so excited. Oh, don't, don't. Be calm and sweet and try to entertain me with some of your delightful life. Don't, Nikolai, don't. We shall sit here together, you and I, and wait for him. Oh, Russell. Get away. Take your dirty hands off. All right, Russell. It's not all right. 
I won't touch you. Still trying to earn your dirty wages, huh? No, you don't. You won't trick me into your place again, you lying sneak. I won't listen to such insults. You won't, huh? You listen to me, all right, you filthy gutter whelp. I won't, you hear? Go away. Bar me out, will you? I'll show you. Don't try to put on airs with me, you little tramp. Pretending you're particular who comes in here is you'll hear the kind of talk you deserve, you smirking, rotten cheek. Oh. oh, laughing at me, ain't you? You both laughed at me, you and that sweet, sacred father of mine. Go ahead and laugh. I'm not laughing, Russell. We never laugh. You're a liar. Why shouldn't you laugh? Me thinking all the time you were everything sweet and clean and decent. <laughs> Afraid almost to touch you. Go ahead, laugh. It's a joke. Me thinking poetic thoughts about you. About you. A woman for hire. A woman with a price mark on her. Not much of a price at that. A mangy she alley cat. Anybody's cat. Anybody's woman. You're right, Russell. That's all I am. You're even worse. Oh, right again. But I've learned my lesson. I'm going away. <laughs> with him, naturally. Uh, alone. It's not that way between your father and me. Don't you see? I care too much for you to stand between You're me. going with him. That's where you're going. Well, I'll show you. And I'll show him, too. Oh. Oh, you think I'm going to your old gent, eh? What a priceless pair of fat heads you and your papa are. Me, in love with Sir Gerald Blink and Courtney. Him pretending he was better than the rest. The only difference was that he tried to get with pounds what others tried to get with shillings. <laughs> Little Junie's the one that got this time. I got this flat and clothes and money. All for a sweet smile and a thank you, sir. Nothing but a... Nothing but. What did you expect? Lilies of the Bloomin' Valley? I did your old man in the eye and he never even blinked. The dotty old boy didn't even get so much as a kiss. You're lying. You're his. And he can have you. I'll thank you to be slinging your hook. Think I'm drunk, don't you? Maybe I am. But not drunk enough to let you trick me again. Not as drunk as I'm gonna get. Do you know what I'm gonna do tonight? Of course I do. Like father, like son. You're going to meet that prize package, Bertie and Walla, up in your flat. Don't like that, do you? Why not? Us girls got to live. Give me a drink. Give you a drink? Milk's more your style. Why, you're not man enough. Oh, I ain't. Still reforming me, aren't you? Give me that drink. No, I won't. Do you hear? Stop it. Who do you think you... Leave me alone. Don't try your dirty tricks on me. Oh. Leave me alone. Oh. Leave me alone. It's the same, the old world over. It's the poor, what gets the blind? It's the rich, what gets the pleasure? Ain't it a blue and shine? It's the same the whole world over. It's the poor one. Hello, Mr. Courtney. 
What's that? I said it's a ripping morning, sir. Oh, yes. Ripping. Plain enough. It happened sometime during the night. She came to his flat and he done her in. All we gotta do is find the lad. That won't be hard. We'll have him by night. You say you saw him coming out of his flat? Yes, sir. He was coming down the steps. And he looked like he'd been drinking. He looked worse than that. He was in a daze like. That's him right enough. Tell headquarters to arrest Russell Courtney. Oh. Serious arresting the son of Sir Gerald Courtney. That's serious too, doing a young lady in. It's a clear case. Very well, Burton. Tell the officers we'll surrender their prisoner in five minutes. Now, you better tell us, Russell, my boy. We can hardly expect further lenience from the police. They've been more than fair in bringing you here. Now, won't you tell us, your father and your lawyer, where you were? And telling where I was is the only way to clear myself? No matter who else it hurts? It's your only chance. If I told the truth, the real truth, it would be too hard to believe. Tell me, my boy, can't you? I'll understand. I'm afraid, Father, you'd be the last to understand the entire truth. Oh, I don't mean to be unkind. Oh, my boy, tell me. It's our last chance. I've treated you shabbily enough already. Haven't I, Father? Sorry. Begging pardon, Sir James, but there's a young lady asking to see you. Says it's very important. A young lady? Well, sir, uh, that is... At uh, this, sir. Uh, Tell her to return in the morning. But, uh, oh, nonsense, I say. Dismiss her. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, my dear, it's good of you to come. I've been looking for you and Wait, I... Jerry. Wait until you've heard what I have to say. You haven't told them, have you? I was certain you wouldn't. Trying to save my reputation? It's past saving, my dear boy. Do you know where Russell was last night? Rather, he was in a lady's apartment all night. How do you know? I happen to be the lady. You mean, it can't be true, not you and... Let me tell him. But of course it's true. It was to be expected, wasn't it? Sorry. I was afraid you'd take it this way. But I'm not sorry. I'm glad. Glad to know the truth. The wedding's off, eh, Sir Gerald? Can't quite stick it now, can you? Remember when I told you you'd never be able to trust me? No, oh, you said yourself that you and he were together. What of it? Where's the faith you swore you'd have in spite of anything that's happened? Well, something's happened, hasn't it? 
And worse than anything else, it's happened with me. Me being what I am. It was to be expected, wasn't it? I loved you. Don't you see? That's what makes it so... Inconvenient is the word. Jealous of your own son. Let me tell him. Oh, I've heard enough. You'll hear just a bit more, Sir Gerald, and you'll listen. Oh, yes, you will. Russell knew how you'd take it. That's why he wouldn't tell where he was. This righteous code that gentlemen have. <laughs> Marry you? Don't fret, Sir Gerald. I'm not having any. I'm just a woman that came to you from the street, out of the fog. A woman for hire. Someone you could buy, and did buy. But not someone so help me you can marry. You've done this for me. I've done it for me, and a thousand pounds. You haven't forgotten the thousand quid, have you? You hired me to save your boy. Me, a stray she alley cat, and blimey, I've saved him. I'll take the check, if you please. Begging pardon, Sir James, but it wasn't Mr. Courtney who did it at all. They nipped a chap, a sort of foreigner, that Spitty is. Does it, uh, Scotland Yard just reports that they've caught a man named Nikolai Rabinov. Caught him in Miss Waller's flat. And he's confessed, sir. Confessed that he killed Miss Waller. Tell the Scotland Yard men I'll see them in a few moments. Well, you're twice lucky, young man. This, of course, clears you absolutely. Too bad, my dear, this couldn't have come a bit sooner. It would have saved this ugly explanation. The gentleman's coat again. Covering up the unpleasant thing. I'd have told him anyway. I'm convinced you would. Thanks so much. I'm sorry. Really sorry. I believe you are. But still sorry for the wrong person. Goodbye, Sir Gerald. Goodbye, Jerry, old man. There's just... One other thing, Sir Gerald. Russell was in my apartment last night. All night. But I wasn't with him. As you were, Sir Gerald. That doesn't change things in the least with you and me. As for this, you know, I have a sort of code too. I'll probably be sorry for this in the morning. However, Right now. June! June! Don't you think you've caused her trouble enough? Father! She loves you. Go after her. Wherever she goes, my boy, I'll follow. <laughs> 